Fourth of July weekend is ready to go. The LA Fight Club, a special edition featuring officers from Los Angeles and New York. Seven amateur fights coming your way with the proceeds benefiting the Susan G. Komen Foundation. LAPD hooking up with Golden Boy on Fourth of July weekend. Hall of Famer, the founder of Golden Boy Promotions, Oscar DeLoya, his statue outside Staples Center, a couple blocks away from where we're at tonight, the home of the LA Fight Club, the Belasco Theater. Alongside the editor of ringtv.com, Doug Fisher, and from UCN Live and Boxing Scene, one of the best boxing scribes around, Steve Kim. I'm Beth Duran. Thank you for joining us on this holiday weekend, 4th of July weekend. And the fireworks are a couple days away, but we're expecting them in the ring tonight. And one of the cool features for this, Doug, is the fact that we have amateur fights featuring police officers from L.A. and New York. It's a great benefit for tonight. Yeah, both of uh, these police uh, law enforcement agencies, they are among the oldest and among the largest in the United States, and they have a history with boxing through the Police Athletic League. And a lot of these um, police officers we're going to see in action tonight, they've actually had real amateur fights, and they boxed in uh, boxing clubs as kids. So they're going to bring some skills. And of course, they're going to bring a lot of courage and bravery to the ring. Yeah, you know, you, we usually cover prize fighting. Tonight truly is, as they say, pride fighting, because that's what they're fighting for, pride for both New York and Los Angeles. Yeah, New York PD, LAPD, and other departments in Southern California involved with the fights. But that's all leading towards our main event, which is going to feature Oscar Negrete and Jose Bustos, co-feature Emilio Sanchez, Hugo Partida. And it opens up with the guy who comes himself the B Justin Bieber of boxing. And <laughs> <laughs> Nico Valdez, 1-0, and I've never seen so much fanfare for a fighter who's 1-0. Something about that Miami vibe, Steve. No, it is. It is the 305 thing. And when you call him the Justin Bieber of boxing. He calls himself the Justin yeah, Bieber. Yeah, you know, uh -oh. I don't know if that is a compliment or a pejorative, but he certainly has that it factor. In talking to the head of Golden Boy Promotions, Oscar De La Hoya, yesterday, he says there's already television producers interested in doing a reality show on the babyface Nico Valdez. Wow. Of course, <laughs> 2016, and well, well, there you see it. Nico Valdez won it all in his only fight. He, he did win uh, here at the Belasco Theater. He was a good amateur. He won four Florida Golden Golden Gloves titles. I believe he made it uh, not to the finals of the national championships, but he actually won a bronze medal. So there's some there's some boxing ability. There's some amateur background there, and you see he brings a, a, a very aggressive southpaw style to the ring. He is a super middleweight slash light heavyweight. Side. Fight fans and aficionados, good evening and welcome. We're at the beautiful Belasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles, California. Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with the Los Angeles Police Department Boxing Team and the NYPD Boxing Team present a full fight card of furious fisticuffs. And it's all to benefit breast cancer research and education through the Susan G. Coleman Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special law enforcement edition of LA Fight Club. All of tonight's amateur bouts are sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. Commissioner John Carvelli, Chair, Executive Officer Mr. Andy Foster. Your judges for tonight's bouts are from Los Angeles, Lou Moret. From West Covina, California, Raul Caez Sr. And from La Mesa, California, Pat Russell. The woman keeping the time and starting the counts is Tiffany Clinton. The ringside physicians for your fights tonight are Dr. Rhonda Rand and Dr. Paul Wallace. Ladies and gentlemen, these heroes lay it all on the line in the streets every day. And tonight, they lay it all on the line in the ring to help researchers and educators save lives. Let's have a big round of applause for all of tonight's fighters.
And that is Alex Cintron, Queens, New York, 24 years old, serving in the 109th precinct in Flushing, Queens. Coming into the ring, wearing 166 pounds. There you go, you see a smile on his face. You're soaking it up. Got an athletic build, tall and rangy, so he carries that uh, 166 pounds very well. Says he's trained in kickboxing and mixed martial arts. Working in Los Angeles with LAPD in the Southwest Division. Also 24 years old from Cupertino, California, up north. That's where he was raised. That's John Bion. Ladies and gentlemen, our first fight of the evening will feature three two-minute rounds of light heavyweight action. Brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions to benefit the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Sponsored by Tecate, Born Bold. Agua de Coco, Puro de Carmelita. Es natural y puro coco. Casa Mexico Tequila, it's in the taste. And the new movie, Hands of Stone, the true story of Roberto Duran, starring Edgar Ramirez, Robert De Niro, and Usher Raymond in theaters this August. At the sound of the bell, the referee in charge of the action is Miss Christy Rosario. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our first fight of the night. It's time to get down to the get down. Introducing first the fighter to my left, fighting out of the blue corner and wearing the blue and white trunks. He weighs 166 pounds and has an 0 and 1 record. He's representing the NYPD's 109 precinct in Queens, New York, Alex Vanilla Nice Cintron. And introducing the fighter to my right, fighting out of the red corner, also wearing blue and white. Weighing in at 161 pounds, He's making his ring debut, representing the LAPD's Southwest Division, John Bune. The belt line is right here. I'm new, and it's right here. Okay, watch behind the head. Okay, keep it up. Protect yourselves at all times and have a good, clean fight. Good luck, guys. Okay. Christy Rosario with the instructions. Get ready to go. This one's scheduled for three rounds. The fighters weighing 166 pounds. So they go to the light heavyweight division, Doug. Yeah, looking at the tail of the tape, they are the same age. Centron enjoys a significant height advantage. He is seven inches taller and a decided reach advantage as well. This is uh, one where you give a lot of credit to the matchmakers for this because it's, hey, let's find somebody with similar experience and... You know what? Forget the height. As well, long as you're in the same weight range, let's yeah, just go on. But I, I got to be honest with you. From seeing a lot of professional bouts, you don't see this much of a size difference. Now, they are both technically super middleweights here, but it is Cintron who looks at least two divisions bigger yeah, than Bion. He looks like a natural super middleweight. Bion, is it is it Bion or Bion? Bion. It's Bion. Um, Steve came with the pronunciations for us. That's a Korean last name, <laughs> am I right? I believe yes. it is. With the one syllable, yes. He's doing the right thing, but he definitely does not look like a super middleweight. He looks like um, kind of like a, a heavy junior yeah. middleweight, absolutely. These are police officers. Bjorn in the all blue, Cintron, white and blue. Thank you for wearing different colors. Appreciate that. That was one of the discussions when the New York police came in. Like, what color are you guys wearing? We got blue and white. 
As Bion is has a Krav Maga and Muay Thai background, he's the one with the red gloves. Year and a half in the LAPD. Sintron, his opponent, has trained in kickboxing and MMA. Good right landed by Sintron, the taller fighter. A year of service in the NYPD. Mentioned earlier, the 109th Precinct in Flushing, Queens. Proceeds for tonight will benefit the Susan G. Komen Foundation. There'll be seven amateur fights featuring police officers, also members of the EMT from Santa Monica, uh, members of the PAL. Really great evening with cha for charity on 4th of July weekend. Closing seconds of the opening round. It's scheduled for 10, or three. Good right, another good right by Cintron. Centron fainting with his jab, getting smothered against the ropes by Bune, who did what he needed to do as the shorter, less ranging man. However, I scored that first round for Centron because this is amateur boxing rules. I thought he landed the cleaner punches with the knuckle part of the glove. I had him basically stealing the round, Steve, with uh, his salvo at the end of the, uh, end of the round. You know, Bune had success early in the round smothering and crowding Cintron, but I thought the last 35 seconds or so was very evident. Once Cintron established the distance and started to unfurl his arms, it's gonna be very tough for Bune to really get inside that airspace of Cintron. And guys, as we start round number two, I think it's going to be very interesting to see what type of pace. I thought Bune set a very quick pace in the opening rounds, but uh, anyone can tell you, if you work out at the gym, it takes about seven, eight months to develop the stamina to even go three hard, brisk rounds. And we want to note here, we're going two-minute rounds for these bouts. Exactly. Two-minute rounds, referee. standing eight count, yep. and this is amateur rules here, so uh, somebody just catches a really good punch. He doesn't even have to be yeah. visibly buzzed for the referee to step in and make sure that they're okay. Christy Rosario is a referee, amateur referee. He does a lot of refereeing of sparring between uh, some of the better pros out there. So you see her gyms all over Southern California. And you're right, Steve, only two minute rounds. So you gotta get that lather up quick. And you know, how cool is this though? I know that the police officers have their leagues where they box, but it's a different story when you have Steve Kim and Doug Fisher well, calling your fight. <laughs> you know, I, I have a feeling this is still not one of their highlights of their career or lives. But I think there's a certain amount of nervousness. There's a good Another left hand, one, right, right, right hand. And right now, I think Cintron looks like the more seasoned fighter, and he's really imposing his advantage in, in skill and also size and length. Bune is going to have a very hard time getting inside here. Blood coming down the nose of Bune. Has a lot of friends and family in attendance. Takes a deep breath, and that'll do it for two rounds. Steve, the harder and more accurate puncher is Centron, and his punches resulted in two standing eight counts for Bion. Yeah, if you really wanted to make this fight a little fairer physically, uh, I would have made the dance partner about four inches shorter and maybe four or five pounds smaller. Uh, I give Bune a lot of credit though. He really is going in. Uh, I don't want to say insurmountable odds, but certainly is an uphill climb tonight for him, especially given the fact that it's his first amateur bout. Yeah, this Not is a, a lot of experience. You know, literally and figuratively <laughs> speaking, a tall order for Bune. <laughs> who is trying, um, not really turning his punches over though, not landing scoring blows despite all of that activity. You can see a good left hook there. And, and I also wonder when these guys spar in preparation for a bout like oh, this, beautiful. the type of headgear also will determine how much punch resistance you can build up. Well, if you use that handlebar and not an open face mask like they're using tonight, um, trust me, it's a big difference between the two. John Bune with the red gloves, LAPD. Alex Cintron had the nickname Vanilla Nice <laughs> as he was introduced out of the NYPD 109th Precinct in Flushing, Queens. He's looking nice after a shaky first two minutes of the opening round. Um, I think he's in his rhythm. He is in his zone. He feels very comfortable and confident out there right now. 
We're at the Belasco Theater. One year anniversary of Ring TV. Do appreciate everybody tuning in every single broadcast that we put on. You know, Steve, body punching isn't really scored in amateur boxing the same way it is yeah. uh, in, in professional boxing. Another. But if I'm in Bjorn's corner, I, I would tell him to go to the, get down, get low. Yeah. Make your make your 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 short stature work for you, and and get to this tall guy's body. Yeah, and they're gonna and stop that's it. the fight uh, They're here. gonna stop it. That's Referee uh, Christian Rosario stops the fight. RSC. Referee stops contest. Alex Centron comes across the country. Gets the first victory for the New York Police Department. Let's see what landed to, led to this. There was a right cross out of the orthodox stance. Steps forward from a southpaw stance, pops him with a stiff right jab, and he's measuring him for that left, and uh, Christy Rosado stepping in to issue a, another standing eight count before stopping it. There you go, Sin John. You know where the camera's at, baby. Go find it. <laughs> Enjoy your moment. Officer Alex Sintron from Queens, New York. Bune came in, a lot of heart with him. But this is the first time he's ever stepped into the ring. Jeez. A little different. No, it really is. You, know, you can work hundreds of hours on the heavy bag, even work dozens of rounds on the mitts, but there's something very different I've always said it, it's a lot harder, guys, when they punch back. <laughs> well, and Centron knows how to punch. Yeah. Well, what's that famous line? Everybody has a plan. So they get hit? Yeah. Centron showed some very nice form in there tonight. And Bune showed a lot of heart. Hats off to both men. And now they get to enjoy six more amateur fights featuring the LAPD and New York Police Department. They can grab a beer, oh, get some popcorn, have a seat. And, and it uh, is stuffy inside the Belasco. <laughs> you're going to get a nice lather if you're on your way here. No need for that jacket. As you see, Officer Bjorn from, he's actually his father, Daniel Marquez Fonseca, was a pro in the 70s. Called him Sugar Dre Fonseca. Is the next fight. Sportsmanship between the two. We're waiting for the judges and somebody to get cued. A lot of directions being thrown around in that ring. And there you see the Golden Boy logo in pink. Proceeds from this will benefit the Susan G. Komen Foundation for Cancer Research, a charity very close to Oscar De La Hoya's family. His mother passed away in 1991 from breast cancer. Really cool press conference yesterday, aired on Ring TV Live. And it, during that press conference, Oscar announced that he would match however much funds were raised tonight for the Komen Foundation. So somebody's supposed to be talking in that ring, but there you see the Golden Boy logo with the pink. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, referee Christy Rosario calls a halt to the bout. 55 seconds into the third round. Your winner by TKO, fighting out of the blue corner, Alex Vanilla Nice in throne. Good job, guys. Good job. The winner from New York PD, Alex Cintron. He's now 1-1 one one in his amateur career. Got to be a rush, though, right? You mentioned, Steve, you can only go to the gym so many times. Yeah. These guys are doing boxing as a way to stay in shape yeah, for right. their stressful jobs. Get the hands wrapped the right way, get the tape, get the commission to put that little X on you. Well, they, get, different. they get the full experience. Well, well, not only that, it's also getting hit in the face. I, I still remember when Ray Leonard, uh, after a three-year layoff, was preparing for Marvin Hagler. He basically said getting hit in the face once again was something that he had to relearn. And that, that's from one of the all-time greats, but basically done it his whole life. 
We see highlights from the opening bout of this evening. And you see thing, very Doug. good technique and, and he, uh, an understanding of distance from Centron. He let his hands go at the right time from the right distance, and he caught Bune at the end of those shots. Centron had pretty good thrust and torque right from his elbows and his shoulders. He was able to really create some real momentum and power. The 24-year-old actually has yeah. real ability. Yeah. Females come